Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to our weekly YouTube Live. Hi, Susan and Beth and Jean and Nancy from California. It's lovely to see everyone. My name is Ali Manning. This channel is Vintage Page Designs. And today we are going to be talking about thread, all about thread, thread for sewing handmade books. So I'm going to jump straight in and explain to you um, the kind of things that we're going to talk about today. So let me quickly share my screen with you and give you a little overview. I hope you like my pun there, untangling thread. Um, let me sure, make sure you can see that. So I'm going to go through these key points today, how to choose thread. I'm going to give you a whole bunch of examples of different threads that I have. And we're going to talk about thread sizes. We're going to talk about waxing your thread. And we're also going to talk about some resources and give you some useful links. So um, hold fire on your questions. Hopefully, I will cover any questions. But once I have gone through this quick presentation, you are more than welcome to, answer, uh, to ask questions. And I will answer them as best I can. So let's talk why. Um, why do we need thread when we create handmade books? Uh, well, we don't always need thread because sometimes we're making folded books. Um, and so we don't always need thread, but we often need thread when we are trying to hold pages together, pages or signatures together. So we use thread to, let's give you another example. We use thread to keep everything at covers and our inner pages together. So that's why that's the kind of thread we're talking about today. Um, there are um, there are sort of like there's kind of a checklist that you can go through when you're thinking about um, choosing thread. There's no right or wrong answer to this. And some of this um, is definitely sort of experience. Um, but the first thing that I think about when I'm choosing thread for my book is um, what's the point of my book? Like, am I going to have a book like this one right here where I use it every day and I write lots of notes in? So that's the kind of book that's going to get a heck of a lot of use. I mean, there's just, yeah, tons and tons of notes in here. So it's going to get a lot of use. So. I'm going to use a different thread to a book that is just going to say sit on a shelf. So this is the book I made with uh, Kristen in the Bookmaker Collective. And this is a really lovely book. It's I finished it. Then I bound the pages uh, with just a simple stitch. And this is going to sit on my shelf. So this is not going to get a lot of use. So the type of thread I could use for this is very different than the type of thread that I could use for a book that I'm going to use every single day that's going to get a lot of use. So you just kind of want to think ahead. Here's another example of a book that it's it's half finished, but it's, a, it's going to be a little artist book with some eco prints in. And when I'm done, it's going to be on display and it won't get a lot of manipulation and, and sort of use every single day. So just think about um, the purpose of your book when you're thinking about the thread. Is this purely decorative and in which case you can kind of go wild? Is this going to be an art book um, that maybe is going to go in a show? Then you perhaps wouldn't even be using thread. You might be using something else to find your book like wire or um, something funky, um, something natural, maybe grass or something. So just sort of keep that in the back of your mind or actually in the forefront of your mind when you're choosing what kind of thread um, for your book. And then the second question you want to ask yourself is, um, what type of binding will I be doing? So let me just grab some examples for you. Will this, will the thread in this binding be doing all the work? So this is a Coptic binding. Do this, it's got two covers. And the thread is the only thing holding this together. So there's no supports, there's no tapes. I'll show you an example of that. The um, end papers here aren't glued down and, and adding extra support. There's no glue, it's a completely non-adhesive binding. This thread here is the only thing holding this book together. So we don't wanna go with a really thin, flimsy thread when creating um, an exposed binding like this that is wholly reliant on the thread to hold the thing together. However, if we take a book, a handmade book like this, that's sewn over tapes, so you can see 
these little ribbons here. Well, it's actually cotton tape. Some of the uh, tape is doing some of the work here and supporting the binding. So the um, thread isn't working alone. So I can probably go, well, I have gone with a thinner thread here than I did with this chunky beast because it's getting some help from my tapes. So just think about that too. Um, is, is the thread doing all the work or is it getting some assistance? Um, this binding right here is a lark's head binding that we did in the book club um, a while ago. And again, this is another one where the thread is doing all the work. And we're gonna talk about page thickness um, in a while, in a few minutes, but um, these are fairly chunky pages too. So I went with a thicker thread and the thread is doing all the work. So you can see here that I went, this is getting a little wonky now. Um, I went with a pretty um, thick thread for this one. Um, another couple of examples um, where, so that was an unsupported binding, just like the Coptic binding. This is an example of a supported one where actually it's cased in completely. So there's no exposed binding. We cased it inside and we've got help from the book case. There was actually, um, we've glued down these end papers right here, or the first and last page of the book. Um, so that's supporting um, the binding. And also I believe we used um, some super as well on here. So um, that's a, you know, a, a supported, well, this is actually a cased in binding, but the, um, the thread has got a lot of help here. So just think about your binding type. Here's another type of binding that you um, may see me do a lot. And again, it's a decorative exposed stitch, but we have the case of the book helping us, um, assisting the thread in sort of holding the signatures in place. Okay, so here's the difference. This one, this one, the stitching is exposed, but this one we've got, you know, a case here, which is helping to support the, the binding. So just keep that in mind when you are um, thinking about what thread to use. And don't worry, in a minute, I'm gonna go down to my desk and we'll look at some different thread types, um, which ones you can and can't use, um, which ones I prefer, which ones I don't like, but I sometimes use. The next thing you really, really wanna think about is um, the thickness of your paper. So actually, let, let us flip down right now. Let me, um, nope. Sorry, folks, I'm just trying to get this. There we go. <laughs> Let's look at um, thickness of the paper or the signatures. So in this chunky, Coptic binding, oops, upside down, hello. I used all handmade paper. This is thick, you can see. That's a thick, chunky paper. Here it is right here. So the thicker your paper, the thicker the thread you're gonna use. This, this, is, this needs a lot of support, this thick kind of paper. If you just try and use a very skinny thread on here, it's not gonna be strong enough to support the binding. Um, it also might cut through the signatures um, and it's just it's just not going to be strong enough to hold up this thick paper on this exposed binding. So I used a much, I'll show you in a minute which one I use for this. However, if you have got a book with thinner paper, so this is sketch paper. This is like a, no, it's a drawing paper, maybe a 70 pound drawing paper and I've got the supported binding, I was able to go with a thinner thread. So the thinner the paper, the thinner the thread you're gonna go for. And here's an example of some of you who do calligraphy uh, may know this paper, it's called Tomo River paper. And it's, while it's strong, it's really thin. It's like uh, 52 GSM, so it's a thin paper. So you're gonna go with a thinner thread. If I went and got used a big thick thread and pulled this through, it would rip my paper. So um, that's another thing to consider. The thicker the paper, the thicker the thread, thinner the paper, the thinner the thread. 
And um, I guess the ideal thing is to find sort of something that's middle of the road. So um, and I'll, I'll talk about those in a minute when we when I show you some different threads that I like. Uh, let me see if there are any questions. I don't think so. Uh, let's see. Just double check. Oh, no. Mickey can't comment on YouTube. <laughs> oh, no. Excellent. Good stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Mickey, how are you? Hello, Allie. Hi, you can't answer questions on YouTube. Well, you I posted because I figured somebody would want to know what super is. And yeah. um, it apparently it doesn't show up. Oh, well, that's too bad. Unfortunately, so we do have... Can leave, you can leave me up here if you want. No, that's okay. That's oh. okay, because I have to share my thing. Um, well, can you actually see comments on YouTube? I can see comments, yes. Okay. But nobody can see mine. Oh, are you logged in? Yes. Okay. Well, maybe you and Amber can chat in the private chat here, and then um, she can post them for you. And I'll collect um, I'll collect the links that you're talking about, and we'll make sure they're attached to the YouTube live recording. That'd be wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Oh. Carry on. Okay. It's all good, folks. All good. All those technical glitches. Let's just um, run through one more time then. Um, what I just said, we're going to think about the purpose of the book. We're going to think about the binding type. We're going to think about the thickness of the paper. The second thing you want to think about is availability. Uh, right now, there's lots of things that we can't get hold of because, you know, of supply issues and also price. I mean, some things are just getting so expensive. So really, you want to think about what, what do I have available to me? Um, what can I, you know, what do I already have in my stash? So um, just think about that too, or it could be the middle of the night and you have to make a book and you may only have embroidery floss, then that's what we use and we figure out how to make that work. So um, availability is something also to keep in mind, but ultimately your experience when you choose thread is what is going to deter, you're, you're going to just, as you make more and more books and you try and experiment with lots of different threads, you're going to, you're going to gravitate towards um, the threads you like, the papers you like, the bindings you like, you're going to have go-to ones. So if you're just starting out and feeling a little bit overwhelmed, just um, just keep experimenting, keep practicing, and you will sort of, you'll wind up curating down the kind of materials and the tools and the bindings that you like. Um, let me, uh, let's flip down and um, take just, I'm going to show you some examples of different types of thread so we can um, see what we're talking about here. Uh, ba, ba, ba. I have to switch this round. Nope, that's not what we want. <laughs> there we go. Yay. So let's look at some different types of, um, let's put this paper away. This Toma River paper is pricey, so I don't want to, um, I don't want to crease that. Okay, with the handmade paper. Let's take a look at some of the things. Let me tell you first of all what is not going to work. What is not going to work is thread that you would use in your sewing machine. You can see how thin that is, and hand quilting thread. Um, it might be obvious, but not, not to everyone. So this you are not going to use to bind a book. So sewing thread is a big no, no. But what other choices do we have? We have, we can buy pre-wax linen thread. We can buy some unwaxed linen thread, which we'll look through. We can also work with, where are we? Let's see. We can also work with pearl cotton and we can also work with embroidery floss as well, and there are advantages and disadvantages to both. Um, some people also work in silk. Um, um, I personally, I would only use silk for headbands, but I do know some people sew with silk. Um, some other options which I don't love, but you um, may come across, and this is maybe what you have at home. Some people um, like to work with hemp cord. This is readily available in the big box craft stores. 
I find this a little thick. It says it's 20 pound. So if you're able to find one that's a little bit thinner, let me just see how thick that is. I find that a little thick, but it would work for a chunky binding like that. It, what it wouldn't work for is a, a more delicate binding, say something like this, a more delicate binding with a thinner paper. So if you were to use the hemp cord, so it's thicker, you're going to go with thicker paper, thicker signatures. Um, another thing I'm not in love with is polyester. This is from Amazon. It comes in a book binding kit. I think it's meant for leather. Um, it is wax and it's polyester. Don't, I don't. I don't love it, sorry. Um, if it's all you have and you need to need to make a book, you're gonna choose um, a paper which is quite a bit thicker. So you could not use this on thin calligraphy paper or copier paper or anything. So this is the polyester that is really, um, lots of people buy this on Amazon and it's really not my favorite. But in a pinch, you could use it with thick paper. So what's my favorite um, type of thread to use for making books? Well, I use wax linen thread. So it's already had wax added to it. It is linen, not cotton. And the reason I like that is because um, linen is stronger than cotton. Cotton does work though. And I use basket weaving thread. So um, we will, I'm sure Amber will include in the comments for us the link to Royal Wood. Um, limited, which is in the US, and that's where I buy my basket weaving thread from. And in a minute, we'll go over sizes, but I'll just let you know that this comes in ply. So actually, this is in the wrong order. Here is a two ply thread, here's a three ply thread, and here's the four ply. So you can buy seven ply, but it's really thick. I That's a seven ply, which is super thick. I, I don't use that. Um, so for example, this was a four ply thread because my paper's chunky. This right here was a three ply thread because my paper was a little thinner. And then inside this case bound book, I used the two ply thread, which was this one right here. Thinner paper, thinner thread, thicker paper, thicker thread. The reason I like this is it's pre-wax and I'm lazy, um, but it is heavily waxed, this paper, um, this thread, I beg pardon. It is heavily waxed. What you might find um, at book binding um, supply stores is um, wax that is polished. I believe that this is polished. So it has a thin layer of wax on it. Um, and then you can always add more if you want to. So that's a really good option. Um, we will talk about these numbers in a minute because they confuse the you know what out of everyone. Um, and then you can buy unwaxed linen thread. London Dairy is a really popular brand. I know you can barely see that. It's called London Dairy. It's really popular. You can buy it on Colophon in the US um, and you can just do a Google search for it if you would like to find it in other countries. Um, and I'm sure you can buy it directly from them too. Um, the nice thing about this is it's inexpensive compared to these big, big rolls, which are really pricey. Um, these are much smaller amounts. Um, they come in all different sizes and they come in all different colors. So you could get a nice range of colors um, from London Dairy, which is a really nice option. But this is completely unwaxed. So you have unwaxed linen, polished linen, which is a thin layer of wax, and then the basket weaving thick, um, thickly coated waxed thread. And that is my preference. So they're the kind of threads that you're gonna find. Um, but you say to me, well, I don't have access to linen thread. You can use cotton. So cotton is perfectly fine. If I had to choose between embroidery floss and pearl cotton, I would go with pearl cotton. And you can buy pearl cotton in fabric stores. You can buy it um, at big box supply, you know, big box craft stores. Um, and it's inexpensive and it comes in bajillion colors. The reason I'd go with pearl cotton is that um, it's twisted. So you can see how the threads are twisted together, whereas the embroidery floss it pulls apart quite easily. So you're going to find pelcon easier to work with, particularly if you're a beginner. 
Um, of course, you would wax both of these because they're unwaxed, but even so, you may find embroidery floss difficult to work with if you're a beginner. And then the um, pearl cotton comes in lots of different, well, it comes in three main sizes. A number, let's see, that's a number five. So the number is on the end here. Of course, it gets messed up. So it comes in a number five, a number eight, and a number 12. And this is actually a really good time for us to think about um, the numbers and these sizes. I have a chart for you that will um, will help you decide um, which ones are equivalent, which pearl cotton is equivalent to my wax linen thread that I like. Um, so number 12 is the thinnest and number five is the thickest. Um, and I'll show you in a second on the screen how they compare. But um, personally, I would probably mostly work with the number five. I think. Um, and then you have embroidery floss. Nicely about embroidery floss, cheap, um, lots of colors. And you know, you can even get like hand dyed ones as well. You can get variegated. You can even get metallic, although be careful because they're a little bit brittle. But the, you know, the thing with embroidery floss is you have a lot of choice. So um, I will cover waxing these in a minute, um, how to do that and why we do it. But first, I'm going to um, check your questions and talk about these different numbers and sizing because it gets really confusing. Um, you know, this has got a different numbering system. This has a different numbering system. These have different plies. So if you're trying to order online, it can get really confusing. Um, there we go. Pill cotton. Yep, that's right. Um, let me see. I'm just trying to switch around. So when we talk about um, when we talk about the um, this kind of thread, so this kind of thread where it has twelve and three, or it'll have eighteen and three. I don't know if you can see that. It has eighteen and three on it. The first number, the number 18, is the gauge. So the gauge is the size or the thickness. So an 18 gauge is thinner than a 12 gauge. Oh, we can see these. So a t the larger the number, the, um, no, the, the smaller the number, the thicker the gauge. So a 12 gauge is larger than an 18 gauge. It's counterintuitive. So for example, let me just switch down again. Um, oops, let me just, I'll just do it like this. Hopefully you can see, let me just, there we go. Let me show you with the London Dairy thread. It's probably easier than with um, this thread right here. But let's see, it's, this is one here. This says 50 and three. So the gauge of this thread is 50. Let's move all these. We have, we have a thread festival going on here. This is a 50 gauge. So that's pretty skinny. You can barely even see it, right? Can you even see that thread? Whereas this one right here has it says it is 30 and three. So that is quite a bit thicker. 30, skinny. I mean, 50, super skinny. And then you've got 30, which is a little bit thicker. And then what other one do we have here? We have, oh my goodness, we have an 80 gauge. That's super thin. See, I mean, I know it's difficult for you to see probably. Let me get some more light here. But the larger the number, the um, thinner the thread. So 18 is thinner than that 12. I hope that makes sense. Um, and then what does this second number mean? Well, that's just the number of threads that are in there. So these both have three threads. So here's the yellow. There are three threads here. And they are an 18 gauge. This one right here also has three threads. This has got three threads, but it's a 12 gauge, so it's thicker. You can probably even see on my hand that it's thicker. Let's have a look at these ones. This is a 50 and three. 
So it's a 50 gauge and it's three, um, three threads twisted together. What's this little puppy here? This one is, it's hard to find the numbers on here. Where's the number? Oh, 18 and three. So that's a very common book binding um, size. So that's a size 18, a gauge 18, and it's three threads twisted together. Okay, so pop quiz in the chat, I'm gonna test you. I've got these two threads here, one's an 18 and three, and one's a 12 and three. Which thread is thicker? Is the 12 thicker or is the 18 thicker? And remember, it's counterintuitive. So let me know in the chat while I tidy up all these threads. Let me see if anyone knows, I'm gonna see. Yep, 12, exactly, nice. Yep, that's right, Mark, that's right, Jean. Yep, the 12 is thicker. I know it's really, really confusing. Um, and the best thing is if you can just feel them yourself to see what's thicker, but often we're ordering these online, so we can't. Um, I'm gonna share with you a little, mm -mm -mm, a table. So if you've got a pen and paper nearby, you may wanna write this down. And um, we will probably provide this via email. So if you're on our email list, we will. Um, this will be in next week's email. Um, but let's look at this right here. You can see we just talked about 12 and three at the bottom. Well, that is equivalent to three, um, a number three pearl cotton. And it's also equivalent to six strands or embroidery floss, so the whole thing. If you have an 18 and three, which is thinner, you're gonna use a three or maybe a four ply basket weaving thread. You'll use a number five cotton or you'll split your embroidery floss into four pieces. And then if we go even thinner, right up to the top, we'll have a 30 and three, which is um, a two ply in the basket weaving thread. So you remember that the two ply is what we used for the case binding the very thin one, you'd use a number eight pearl cotton and you'd use just two strands or embroidery floss. So I'm gonna leave that on the screen for a minute and see if there's any questions. Um, let's see. Does anything else? Can I turn my camera around and zoom in? Am I all set now, Mickey? Yeah, excellent. All right. Okay. So Sally says, I find thickness to think about how many threads laid side by side would it take a centimeter? That's a really good idea, Sally. So that brings up a good point. Um, some people, I'm sure I'm looking for a pencil. What they do is they take a pencil. I'm just going to stop sharing my screen now. Some people take a pencil and they wrap their thread around it. So they say they've got two different threads. They wrap it around, you know, the same number of times, and then they work out the thickness like that. So that is also another way, if you're like, Ugh, numbers, give me a break, and you know, trust me, I understand it. But another way to do it, say you've got two different threads, and you're like, I'm just not sure you can, like Sally says, wrap them, um, lay them out and then see what makes either a quarter inch or a centimeter that will maybe give you a better idea as well. Um, I will honestly say though, um, I tend just to go back to the same couple threads, um, which are um, the uh, generally like the um, 18 and three in the traditional waxed um, linen or the polished linen thread. I use a three or four ply from um, Royal Wood, or I'll use a number five pearl cotton. And I rarely use embroidery floss only because um, I find it pulls apart. So um, let's talk a little bit about, um, let's see, I'm just reading the questions. Um, I will answer that one in a quick second, Kathleen, I promise. Um, let's just talk very quickly about waxing because I keep talking about waxing thread. So if you're using pearl cotton 
or you buy polished wax thread and you want to add some extra wax, first of all, why do we wax? Um, that's quite a good question. Um, one of the reasons we wax is so that our knots hold tighter. Um, the thread glides through our sewing holes uh, more easily. And then the sewing also stays in place. Um, it just stays in place a lot better with rather than without wax. I um, mean, also, I find it also stops me tearing my paper as much um, if I have some wax on my thread. So it is really important to um, add some kind of wax to your thread. Um, but you're going to use beeswax, not candle wax. Let's just take that out. Um, so don't use a candle, you, which is, I don't know what even candle is. It's soy or paraffin. I don't know. You want beeswax. Um, you want to buy a block. So you can just go to buy a cute little block like this from like, um, if you if you don't get it from a book binding place, you can get it from like a health food store. A lot of gift stores sell them. They come sometimes comes like this, place where they sell honey products, farm stand. Um, but you may also find it in your um, fabric store and it'd be like a cake like this inside a plastic holder. And then you drag the thread through these holes right here. So you would grab your piece of thread. Let's find an unwaxed piece. And you place it on top like that and drag it through the little notch. And I do it three or four times because I like heavily waxed thread. We just pull it through here and often I'll put my thumb um, over the thread so that it warms up the wax as you pull it through and gives a really nice um, coating to it. So I like a lot of wax. Some people don't like a lot of wax. It's entirely, it's sort of personal preference. So that is wax. Um, where do we buy all of these threads that I talked about? So um, if you want to buy um, pearl cotton or embroidery floss, just any fabric store, even um, quilting stores, knitting stores, any sort of fabric or craft store, you can get hold of these. And I'm sure you can buy them online as well. Um, let me find some other ones. Let me show you. In the US, um, Royal Wood Limited is where I buy the basket weaving thread. I really like that. Um, but if you go on Etsy, um, there's a lady called Beth, who's um, a good friend of ours, and she sells packs of this thread in all different colors. So instead of spending, say, 15 or $20 on a roll, um, like, well, because I teach, I have lots of thread, um, you can get nice sample packs. So if you look up on Etsy, Uber Art, um, and I think it's free shipping over $35. So um, she's a great resource. So if you don't want to buy big spools, um, like this from Royal Wood, you can always go to Beth at Uber Art. Um, Colophon uh, Book Arts uh, in the US sells the London Dairy thread. And then um, they also sell the regular book binding um, thread as well. So does Hollanders, so does Talis, and they're both book binding suppliers. Um, what I will say is that um, if you are ordering from any of these places, and Royal Wood Limited, um, you can get um, sample cards. And I don't know about you, but there's something about just touching those threads to see how they feel. I can tell you all the numbers, what I would recommend, but nothing really beats touching that thread and seeing how it feels. So I would suggest if you're placing an order at any of these places, um, you just throw in your cart a sample card. They're about $5 and it'll give you um, a sample of each of the threads. So um, you may find that. Um, I find that really useful um, for paper, for bookboard, and and for thread as well. Um, and then if you are in the UK, um, there is a Etsy supplier who does something similar. Uh, I think it's called Buchtiger um, Suppliers on Etsy. They um, do sort of sample packs of different colors. Um, Ratchford's uh, Pro Atelier. So where's the Pro Atelier one? <laughs> Well, it's somewhere around here in my my festival of thread. Can't find it. It'll show up. Um, I know that um, many people in the book club love Pro Atelier. 
um, and Ratchfords and Hewitt and also probably Shepherds sell the book, different types of bookbinding thread, uh, particularly the ones um, from Ireland, which are really popular. So I think it's this one is from Ireland. The Coates Barber is from Ireland, this Irish linen thread. So um, those places in the U UK sell them. Let me just see if there's any questions. I think there are lots of questions actually. Um, how we see. So let me um, answer a couple of your questions about thread now. I will get back to the Coptic binding that's falling apart. So here's a great question from Janet. She says, I'm still at the beginning of my bookmaking journey and I'm on pamphlet stitch. Perfect. Is there a trick to not splitting the thread on the final needle push through or does it just come with practice? That's a really good question. Um, part of that is wiggling your needle. So part you'll you sort of catch the previous thread with your thumbnail and then push your needle through. So sort of pull it to one side with your finger or thumbnail, then push your needle through and give it a wiggle and sort of put your needle to one side. But it is really common to split your thread. It's just, it, yes, it is practice, but it's also um, just looking at that sewing hole and moving aside the previous thread and then bringing your needle sort of away from that thread and that should help you um, with the splitting. That's a really good question. And if you are using embroidery floss, for example, um, or the pearl cotton, the um, the splitting can be a problem. Um, if it continues to be a problem, keep, um, add some more wax maybe to your um, thread so that, you know, it doesn't split as easily. Great question, Janet. Um, let's see. Kathleen asks, I'm going to take apart a Coptic binding, but the signatures are starting to tear. Is this book lost? No, it's not lost. So if that were me, what well, if that, so say I took apart this book and actually in a minute, I am going to take apart a book. I'm going to take apart and re-sew a book for you and show you with my paste papers from last week. Um, if I was going to take apart this book and my signature started to tear, what I would do is I would add a little wrapper around each signature. So it, this is a wrapper, so it's a full piece of paper, um, Or, but you could make yours a little bit narrower. So wrap each signature with a piece of decorative paper or even a new piece of paper, um, and then that will protect them a little bit. You could, if you're in the middle and you know, you've know you got a rip in the middle, you could add a tiny piece of glue, but I probably wouldn't. I would probably go in and add a signature wrapper to protect them, and then just be super careful when you um, go in and do the sewing. Again, just, just be really careful that you don't make those holes any bigger. I mean, you could use washi tape too, um, on that spine, on the spine of the um, the book if you wanted to, but I think your signature wrapper is, is a better bet, to be honest. All right, let's see what else. Uh, Kathleen, I made a book and I didn't measure. Yes, that was a weaver's knot. I think someone answered that. Um, ba, ba, ba. Let's see. Um, let's see. I think that's all of the questions. Let me cut, let me um, get rid of that. Um, I was going to quickly show you, would you like, there's a question about watercolor paper. Okay, where's the watercolor paper question? So if I, I don't know what the question is, I can't see it. Let's see, Mickey will pop it in. You want to, um, you want to tell me what the question is, Mickey? Okay, um, it, uh, uh, 140 pound was very thick. So the question, I'm sorry, I don't remember who asked, um, what is your favorite watercolor paper for using? And it's not quite as thick as 140 pound. I don't use a ton of watercolor paper. I, uh, if I was gonna use watercolor paper, I'd use Arches, 90 pound. Um, but also I'm a bigger fan of printmaking paper. So I just find it a little bit more versatile. So, um, so arches would be my favorite, or maybe um, uh, I like Stonehenge printmaking paper. I have to say that is my favorite kind of paper. So I'm not an expert on watercolor paper, so I don't want to um, tell someone which way to go, but I would personally choose arches. Um, but if others have um, suggestions for their favorite, 
go for it. I don't, I don't care for the Canson um, that you buy in the pads just because it's very woody and um, it breaks easily. So just go, just find, if you're gonna use a watercolor paper, find something with like a lot of um, cotton in it or as much cotton in it as you can afford, I would say. Um, but yeah, Cardi as well is my, I would, I personally go for other papers over watercolor paper. So were there any other questions I missed? Um, let me just say that I think it's the links that might be the problem in our Amber and I commenting on YouTube. It does not, it's not liking links. So oh. we're putting names of things in, but um, just to let everybody know, we'll post all of the links on the recording and also in Facebook. Yeah. Um, and I did put a whole bunch of links underneath the description, I think. Did I? Um, if you look in the description of today, I think I put some links in there, but perhaps not everything that we talked yeah. about today. Yes, there are definitely links there and we'll add more. Okay, um, where can we find Tomo River paper? Sharon asked. So um, where, where did I buy my Tomo River paper? I got mine at Jet Pens, but a lot of calligraphy, um, a lot of calligraphy supply places. So anywhere where you can buy fountain pens, like um, is it Goulet and um, places like that? I've, maybe I'm not pronouncing it correctly. Anywhere you can buy fountain pens, um, it's where you would find the Tomo River. Um, I would just do a Google search because you can find it in lots of different places, um, Sharon. But yeah, I got mine from Jet Pens. I'm pretty sure that's where I got it from. Um, let's see. Thank you, Amber, for sharing that comment. Yay. Um, all right. Would Would everyone like me to see me rebind my book or no? That's just, I don't know. Maybe you don't really want to see it. I don't know. I'm going to clean up. Um, that is the end of thread. I know we've probably got questions about needles. Oh, here's that uh, thread I was looking for. I know we've probably got questions about needles, but I'm going to cover needles in a different um, live video. Um, okay, let's see. I'm just checking the questions. Okay. Apparently, yes, you would like me to rebind my book. So what um, I'm going to show you the paste papers that came out last week, and I'm going to choose one. I may have already chosen one. And I'm going to rebind um, this journal of mine, which is like falling apart. So I figured we would do this and I would talk you through how I'm going to choose the thread that I use. Um, <laughs> so I just want to see Nancy's comment. She says, be careful. Jet pens is a rabbit hole. Yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. OK. OK, here we go. So here are the, um, the thing with these, these YouTube lives is that um, the studio winds up being a complete mess afterwards. Let's just get rid of all of the threads. <laughs> we have threads everywhere. Here are some of the um, paste papers that we did last week. If you are looking for that video, it um, you can find it on my YouTube channel. Uh, I don't think we can post the link, but that is... Um, that was last week's, so the recording is up on YouTube. Um, I did want to show you, here was the craft text. We paste, we paste, paste papered on craft text, whatever that is. Um, we used paste on craft text and um, used the top of a um, laundry detergent uh, bottle to create these circles. What you'll notice is that here in the craft text, it's slightly blurry, whereas with the paper, it's a lot crisper. So neither one is good or bad. That's just how it is. Um, so that's slightly crisper. Um, but this it feels lovely. The craft text feels great. Um, this I don't I wouldn't even seal this or anything. It's it's absolutely fine. If you wanted to seal this, you could add some um, matte medium or some of um, the wax whose name escapes me and someone will share that with you. Um, I can't remember the name of it. It's like a thin wax that you put over it. If you wanted to, personally, I'm not going to. Um, here are some of the other dried uh, pieces that came out. This was, we did some acemic writing with a credit card. There's some more circles from the laundry detergent. And then we did um, a hair comb over the top. This one right here was pulled. So we, oh, Trying to get on camera. So we just folded this over and then opened it up. This is a pulled pattern. This was um, the credit card 
that we, um, this one and this one, it's a credit card that we um, cut with the cropper dial, cut notches in. This was done with a simple paintbrush. So was this, just simple brush lines, brush strokes, brush lines. Oops, there we go. And then these last two were um, plastic bags. So gro plas plastic grocery bags, so sort of dabbed on afterwards. And then um, oh, there's the crafters. And then here's, here's one I'm just playing around with. This one again was, I think it was a brush that we used just to create these lines. And then I've been experimenting with some weaving. So we'll do that in a later, later live. So there's the, um, there's the papers. And then, so this was my favorite. So I decided to use this to bind my book today. Um, the reason I'm rebinding this, so this is a journal that um, has been going for about a year and the cover, I chose a soft paper cover and it's just fallen apart. So I thought I would walk you through how I choose the thread to rebind this book. So let's um, let's freak Mickey out and uh, unbind the book. Jerry is asking, what weight of thread can I use for soft covered pamphlet? The pamphlets will have a minimum of how many pages, Jerry, will you have? Um, I would just use a three or four ply wax linen thread or pearl cotton. So let's unpick this book. Let's get rid of this rather, um, rather sad looking cover. It's quite well used. Let's throw that in the trash. Let's get rid of all my threads. So this book is the cover. I'm hoping that the uh, paper is the right size. Mm, pretty much. I might have to. Yeah, pretty much. So these pages are pretty thick, which is good. Um, so I would normally go with a thicker thread. Where are we? But the book is now full. So if this book was empty, see this is cardi paper and that's a chunky signature. So if this book was empty, I would go with a thicker four, I would probably use a four ply wax linen thread for this. Or if I was going to use um, embroidery floss, I would probably go with um, four or six strands of embroidery floss or probably a number five pearl cotton. Um, but the book is now finished and it's only going to sit on my shelf. So what I could do is go with a, I could still use this heavy thread, which I probably will. But if I wanted to, I probably could go with something a little more decorative. So I could get away with, say, using an embroidery floss, which is not as um, strong as the linen. So I could wax up this embroidery floss and, um, and use that. So that's kind of where my thinking goes. This is going to be, um, it's just a simple uh, running stitch book. Um, it's fairly thick. Um, the stitching is going to do all of the work really in holding this together. There's going to be no glue, so the thread's got to work pretty hard. It's a thick signature, but it's now not going to get a ton of use. So I could go with this and add some wax. It wouldn't be as strong. Or I could just go with what my instinct tells me, which is my four ply wax linen thread, which will definitely hold this puppy together. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Let's find, let's find a needle. Uh, let's see, which needle do I want? So the thing about um, waxing your thread so much, which is what I like to do, it winds up um, putting, getting a wax in your eye, eye of your needle. So they're hard to um, thread. So oftentimes I'll um, just warm it with my fingers and then um, it should, it kind of comes out. So let's, I have to, um, do about three times. We need to punch some new holes in our, um, cover. Let's clip this baby together. Sorry, this is a long one today. Let's clip this together. 
we are. Puts the holes in. I'm going to use my little punching cradle. And I'll just use um, the old holes as my guide. There we go. The old sewing holes. And we'll sew this baby. That's our little traveling punching cradle. Okay. This is already waxed, so I don't need to add any wax. If I had chosen to use the less strong cotton embroidery floss, I'd be um, waxing it to within an inch of its life by now. Uh, let's see. Hopefully, I can get this threaded. There we are. And now I'm just going to do um, a running stitch. I'm going to start the top. I'm going to leave a little thread. I'm going to leave about six inches at the top there. Make sure that no one's asking a question. Oh, here we go. This should be interesting. I'm trying to get. Oh no, it went right through. I'm just doing a running stitch from the bottom, from the top to the bottom, and then I'm going to come back. So these um, stitches are placed about, looks to me about an inch and a half, inch apart. So I could be wrong. So remember, if you can't find your hole, just go back from the other side and push through. I'm going to wrap my um, thread over the bottom here like that. We can probably lose that clip now, can't we? I'm going to wrap that over like that and then come back up. Nice and easy. Maybe I just wanted to um, sew this book just because I've actually completed a whole journal, which honestly, I don't know about you guys, but takes me, I, sometimes I never even finish filling a journal. I've got so many half finished pieces. So now I'm coming out, I'm ending at the top here. So one thread that my working thread with my needle on is on the outside. And then my first thread from the beginning is on the inside. And I'm just going to tie a knot. I could either tie the knot at the top and have the threads poke out the top if I wanted to, or I could tie my knot on the inside. And I am going to tie my knot on the inside. If I wanted to have my um, threads on the outside, I could, and then I could add some um, beads. Now, should I do that? No, I'll tie it off on the inside. So I'm just tying a square knot. I'm trying not to flatten, try not to pull too hard, otherwise the, um, the cover will get squashed. So this is nice and waxed. So I'm pressing it down and holding that first part of the knot. This is just a simple square or reef knot. And that wax on the thread is gonna hold the knot in place. So let's grab a bone folder push down these threads so they sort of blend in, and then there we are. So, and I may, no, I won't trim that up. If this was, um, if this sort of came out further here, I might trim this up, but um, I think this little overhang of about an eighth of an inch is, is, is fine. So, then we have that little run-in stitch book, and I should, oops, that needs to be pulled through a little bit more. There we go. I showed you how I um, chose my thread for that. All right, Miss, if there's any questions, I wonder if there are. Um, is there a re, hold on, let me just turn this off. Is there a reason for the thread to go around? No, it's just the type of stitch I fancy doing today. Um, Kate, it's just, um, my preference today, that's what I wanted to do. Good question though. 
Um, do I have a favorite needle? Yes, I like the Talus. Um, I like the Talus bookbinding needle. Yes, I do. So, um, but we will talk all about um, needles another day. Does the wax help the paper from tearing? Asked Karen. Um, does it stop it tearing? I think it helps to keep your stitches more secure. I, I mean, somewhat. I'm just thinking. Uh, 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 no, I, I wouldn't say it stops it from tearing. It certainly holds your stitches in place. What's going to stop, um, what, what will help your paper not tear is, you know, the tension that you use when you sew um, and also the thickness. If you've got a very thick thread, that might tear thinner paper. So, I mean, the wax might play a tiny role, but when it comes to tearing your paper when sewing, it's more you want to pay attention to the thickness of the thread and also your sewing tension. If you're yanking, your thread through, um, you're more likely to tear your paper, particularly if it's a delicate paper. So, um, great question. Um, ch -ch -ch. Jerry says her pamphlet stitch will be very thin, 10 pages max. So if you're having, so let's think about this. So this is a great question that um, uh, Jerry is asking. She's going to make a pamphlet stitch book with 10 pages of very thin paper. So what kind of thread would she use? Would she go with a thick 20 pound um, hemp cord? Or would she maybe go with a thinner, like a maybe number eight pearl cotton perhaps? I mean, not yeah, number four, or number five. I would go with like a number five pearl cotton, an 18 and three linen thread, or maybe a three. Um, you could even get away with a two ply wax linen thread or maybe even two strands or three strands of embroidery floss, but onion skin, thin, delicate, go on the thinner side um, of your, of the thread, Jerry. Um, let's see. Anne says, I find the wax tends to stop the thread from knotting up as you pull through. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you, Anne. Um, Anne makes a really good, um, point so the same thing again um you know when you're using a very long thread and uh, it can get tangled the thread will um, help you not get knots in that thread I mean it's not foolproof of course and um, I would suggest you don't use super long pieces of thread and um, that you use a weaver's knot to join two pieces together but I know everyone's allergic to weaver's knots so yeah it's um it is really useful for preventing knots um so thank you Anne for mentioning that um Okay, I think we are heading to the top of the hour, so we should wrap things up. Um, thank you for bearing with me and um, for this chat all about thread. Hopefully you found it useful. Um, keep the questions coming. If you're watching the recording, we will answer, we'll answer all your comments. We'll get to all your questions. Um, please, um, below I included a link to our newsletter. Please sign up for our newsletter because I'll be sending out um, that little conversion chart. Um, with the recording of this and um, I will see you here next week. Um, next week's YouTube live will be a Q&A session. I am going to be um, out of the studio so we're going to do a Q&A session um, all about creative business. So if you have a creative business, you're looking to start a creative business, I will be answering all of your questions about that. Make sure you sign up for our newsletter because we will have a form that you can fill out to submit your questions and I will um, gather them all together and answer the most popular ones. So that will be next Thursday at noon Eastern. Thank you for being here, everyone. Um, thank you to, hold on, I'm just gonna add them to the screen. Thank you to Amber and to Mickey for being my co-pilots and helping me out and have a wonderful week, everyone. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye.